Good morning, everyone. All right, that's better. I want to say uh, welcome to our second Innovations and Simulations Conference. Uh, my name is Kelly Bryant. I'm the Executive Director of Simulation here at Columbia School of Nursing, and I'm also the Program Director for this fabulous conference we have here today. Um, just to give you a little background, we have some wonderful, great presenters for you today. These are our nursing leaders, experts in simulation, researchers, and they're coming from all over. We have some people that are local, right here from New York, and we have one presenter that came all the way from Qatar. <laughs> so, um, and we're having representation from different professions. We have the nursing profession uh, that's going to be presenting, but also we have some physicians here. We have people from industry. So we have a nice, nice interprofessional conference for you today. The format for today, just to give you a little bit about how things are going to proceed, each of our present, we have three panels. And within those panels, each presenter will have 15 minutes to present their topic. Once the panel is finished, we will have all the presenters come to the front, and we will open it up to the audience. You are free to ask any questions, and also panel participants, we can all, you can also ask each other questions, so that it's more of an interactive. So please, you have notebooks at your stations. If in the middle of a presentation, please write down your questions, because at the end, we'll be having microphones going around and taking some of your questions. In addition, you're going to notice on your table, you have this nice laminated piece of paper. If you're shy, and let's say you don't want to be on the microphone, that's fine. If you text Kelly Bryant 160 to the number 22333 we, and type your question, we will have that on our computer and we will ask the questions for you to our panel. So that way, in case you really are shy and you don't want to be on the microphone, we also have a way for you to participate. If you have any questions, we have our staff there walking around and they can assist you. So we thought it might be a good idea just to tell you a little bit about our simulation center. Um, here at Columbia, we have, this is a brand new building, seven stories, and two of those floors are for our simulation center. So Columbia has taken a lot of initiative in, in understanding the importance of simulation. We have, uh, we just opened in September 2017, and we have over 700 students enrolled in our program. We have two master's programs, our CRNA and our um, master's direct entry, which are students who are, have a degree and are pursuing an RN degree, and they end up with a master's instead of a second bachelor's. That's our biggest program. And we also have uh, quite a few DMP programs, adult Jerry acute care, adult Jerry primary, FNP, midwifery, PNP, and psych mental health. Oh, I see the PNP faculty, yes. <laughs> And a little bit about some of the, the things that we're working on. Um, we do have quite a few of our students that go overseas to, uh, I think it's up to 11 different countries as part of their capstone. They go to Ghana, Mexico, Spain. And we use our simulation center to prepare them to go to those low resource countries. Um, last year we had a huge group, 78 students that we had come through our simulation center to help prepare them for their clinical experience. We also offer, besides our regularly scheduled classes, we offer a lot of what we call mini simulation courses that the students find very valuable. And this is just, we offer this once a month for our students. They fill up very, very quickly. Um, usually you have to run them quite a few times. And such things as rapid response, EKG 101. We just had trained to be a stop the bleed um, training center. Uh, IV assertion, verbal de-escalation, a lot of different topics that we offer here for our students. And one of the other big initiatives that we're working on is to increase our students' um, ability to really provide a culturally sensitive care to LGBTQ uh, patients. And this is a picture from one of the workshops that we had. We had three-hour workshops for all of our DNP students, where we actually had a panel of experts come in and speak to our students, in addition to two transgender female patients that uh, had a panel discussion and told their story. Our next step is we're actually going to have a simulation. We've hired. Um, two transgender female patients. Students are going to come in and do some interviews, sexual history, and some other scenarios so that we can improve upon on that. We also do a lot of interprofessional simulations. You're going to see here, we team up with, um, in this wing, we have all the health professions, which is occupational therapy, physical therapy, public health, social work, nutrition, pastoral care, dental, medicine, uh, genetics. Am I missing anyone? 
And we have the students come together once a year and we have an interprofessional simulation. And these are pictures from that event where they come in and take care of a case together where they learn about each other's profession, they learn with each other, and they collaborate on developing a, a plan of care on our, for our patient. And our next one is coming up in November 7th and we're doing an escape room interprofessional uh, simulation. So we're excited about that. We have to do a lot of development. Anybody who teaches in our simulation center is required to have simulation training. So we've been doing that over the past two years and uh, we've trained 114 people, not just our faculty, also our teaching assistants, doctors from the hospital, other nurses from the hospital, uh, and had over 16 training sessions. One that I'm very proud of, we had our first interprofessional training session, David, about two weeks ago, <coughs> where the three simulation centers on campus came together and we did a training at um, one of the other simulation centers that was very successful. So we hope to do more of those sessions. We also have a strong collaboration now with our hospital across the street, where we have them come over. They use our simulation center for orientation of new nurses. We do joint simulations together, a lot of mock codes, where we include our students plus staff from the hospital, which our students love. And that's a picture after one of our trainings. And also we think it's important to give back to our community right here in Washington Heights. So you see the pictures here. We, can, we um, participate in a lot of health fairs. We speak at community boards. You can see here, this picture on the left was just a couple weeks ago, and that's actually our city councilman who received his um, Narcan training from our table. We trained 86 people two Saturday, Saturdays ago with Naloxone and 60 people on Stop the Bleed. And we love the kids. <laughs> so in our simulation center, we do a lot of trying to promote um, our young students to consider a career in nursing. So we team up with a lot of schools and we have a two-hour curriculum where we actually bring them in and we do an introduction to nursing, um, we talk about the profession, what's needed, and then we also make it fun. We put them through an asthma scenario uh, with our mannequin, our five-year-old pediatric mannequin, and the students have a great time. It gives them a way to expose them to nursing, give them a hand-on experience, and we really focus on schools particularly that are underserved. And these are some of our pictures for some of our events. <laughs> And we've had some media covers. We have a great communication team. And we've been on uh, Today's Show, for example. We had an Al Jazeera uh, media and Market Watch um, to promote, again, simulation and nursing in our simulation center. And coming up in a couple of weeks, has anybody heard this show? Something's Killing You? We teamed up with CNN, and they're actually using our simulation center to record some of their um, episodes. The first one is going to be on October 20th at 9, and it is about rat lung worm disease. I've never heard of it. <laughs> and it's as scary as it sounds. <laughs> so you will see highlights of our simulation center in the next three episodes. And it's a great way of also providing some income for our, our simulation center. And one of the things that we're also proud of is we do a lot of work with naloxone training. We uh, not only train all of our students, but we've been training um, community boards. This is our local community board, because we have a very, very high rate of opioid overdose, particularly in this neighborhood. Um, in New York City in general. We also provide naloxone training, and not just naloxone, we also talk about safe prescribing of opioids. We talk about how to become a, a MAT provider. And these are all the dental students. So we have, um, now we train, educate all of the dental, occupational, physical therapy, public health, um, and nursing students before they enter clinical, they're required to go through this training. So that's over a thousand people a year that we're gonna be training. And this is one where we train our own students, and everybody gets their own kit. We also have received some grants over the past uh, year and a half. One of the ones we're most proud of is um, our simulation to improve infection prevention and patient safety, for short, we call it SIPS. And that's a $1.86 million grant that we received from ARC. And that's really to study providing simulation training to promote hand hygiene, um, adherence to standard precaution in the hospital setting. We teamed up with our hospital across the street and another hospital in Hackensack where we'll be looking at infection rates and um, how people are um, adhering to standard precautions. Another grant that we received this year is that um, is the Columbia Global Innovation Fund. We're going to be starting a simulation program in Pakistan, India, and we're going on that trip in December, so I'm looking forward to that. So we're going to hopefully start a simulation center, uh, and in other regions and other nursing schools will be using that simulation center, and we're hoping that um, we'll get additional funding for that. 
And we're going to start doing a little bit of uh, augmented reality. We have a grant from Hewlett Packard to start um, one of our cases that we used to do with standardized patients. We decided, let's take that case and see if we can do it in augmented reality. And that's been pretty successful. We're in the stages of programming right now. And it's for adult nurse practitioner students and uh, occupational therapy and physical therapy all working together on a case and doing a history with our avatar. Her name is Beth right here. And they're going to develop a treatment plan, and it's a great interprofessional simulation that students um, need more of. And this, uh, we have a Hearst Foundation grant we just received a couple months ago, over our, our half a million dollars that's going to be spread over two years to help equip um, our simulation center to help pay for faculty development, to go to conferences, to send people for training, to, be, uh, to get their certificate in simulation. And it also paid for our students to have access to an electronic medical record system that we use in our simulation center. So we're very thankful for the Hearst Foundation. And um, we're just doing a lot of different things. This is our, um, we're participating in a, a medical clinical trial. They were looking for a site to conduct their mobility test for a genetic disorder called Lever syndrome that leads to blindness. So they're doing some gene uh, modifi modified therapy. Um, and then we need to test their acuity. So we are that site and we'll be testing their visual acuity to see if this treatment is working. So an um, investigator on this um, study, and we also have our simulation staff that are actually going to be running the mobility tests at our center. And that's what it looks like. We have to actually transform our room into this elaborate um, obstacle course for this study. And uh, lastly, we've been working on accreditation. And we just got our results yesterday, our preliminary. And it looks like we've met all the criteria. So now we're just waiting to hear back. Thank you. We're waiting for the final vote. And I just have to point this out. We literally, it was due at 12 o'clock AM. This is what time we submitted. 11.58. So it was a lot of hard work that day. But we got it in. And it looks like we're in good hands. And then lastly, um, something we're all very proud of is this right here, this conference that we have uh, today. We have a five-year grant to um, have this yearly conference, and I'm hoping that even after the grant, we're going to continue. But um, again, having this panel of wonderful presenters, um, I I'm just honored, and I hope to continue. And out of that conference from last year, we actually have a publication that has been accepted and will be coming out in the Journal of Clinical Simulations and Nursing that we're, very, that we're waiting for and very proud of. And lastly, I just have to say, it does take a village. It is, we have a team of seven people, and we couldn't do this without them. So again, I just want to thank our team who's around, um, because without them, this, none of this would have happened.